Webinar Jam is a webinar platform that on the sales page quite literally promises to be everything for everyone. So let's take a closer look at this and see if it can hold up to those promises and if it's a better solution than GoToWebinar and a bunch of other systems that we've tested up to this point. Hello, I'm Shane Malach from ActiveGrowth.com and let's get started right away and find out what it's actually like to use Webinar Jam. Let's start in the dashboard and look at what it's like to create or edit a webinar in Webinar Jam. The first thing you're greeted with is this choice between a short basic configuration or the full configuration. And right away this, as well as the tool tips that I'll show in a moment, to me show that what's happening here is kind of an out of control user interface or user interface problems that haven't been solved yet. It's like, you know, I've been there, you know, I've, I've made my fair share of bad UI. So it's familiar to me, but basically what's happened here is with a webinar solution, you have so many options, you have so many things to go through, and it's difficult to put that into kind of an intuitive user-friendly UI. And they've clearly struggled with that, and they've kind of tried to tape over the issues with more stuff, such as this express configuration, which is better than nothing, but you'll see it's not great. The other thing is you can turn on these fairly obnoxious tips right here, which look like this on hover of every field, they're on by default and basically get in the way of the UI. Also, I don't love it. There's this strange thing in the UI where you, you can open these panels and make changes. You can open multiples of them, but you can't move on to the next thing unless you confirm each individual choice or cancel it. And instead of asking here, you know, do you want to confirm or cancel these choices? You have to go back. You have to remember that whenever you open settings, you have to go back up and either confirm or cancel your choice. It's not very intuitive, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. It takes longer than it probably would have to, to go through the webinar configuration, but it's good that we have all these options. It really covers basically everything you could want to configure about your webinars, you can. Let's quickly talk about landing pages because that's built into Webinar Jam. So you can design your own landing pages to some extent. So let's look at what that looks like by picking one of these templates. This opens a separate builder where you can see an outline around anything you can edit and you can edit or delete stuff. And it tends to be a bit finicky. And you can change things like the text and font size and things like that as you'd imagine. And you get different editing options on different elements. So on a button, we'll get this sidebar here where we can change the color, for example. And depending on what you click, depending on what you choose to edit, you get different options. It's, it's one of the more clunky feeling editors, but you have a decent set of, of you know, well-designed kind of conversion focused landing pages. I would say the customization, the customizability of it is not great, but it's everything you need. So if you create the pages you need, you create like your own templates or you edit them to have your own branding and colors and so on, you basically only have to do that once and then you can just use the same ones in future webinars. So again, it's not great, but it's certainly not a deal breaker. Before we go into what the actual live webinar is like, there's only one thing in the back end that I really feel I need to emphasize. In my testing, I noticed that the emails, so the, the confirmation emails, registration emails, reminder emails, and so on, all of them went into my spam. And I tried different settings and basically all the emails from Webinar Jam always went into my spam folder. This only changed once I went into my profile, into integrations, email gateways, and I integrated it with, in my case, Postmark, which is an email delivery service. So it seems like if you wanna be really sure that all the Webinar Jam emails actually reach your audience, you will have to integrate with your own email delivery service. That's certainly not ideal and something to look out for. Make sure you test that before you go live with any webinar. So now let's go into the webinar itself. And here the options start looking really good because right away I can actually choose to just run a test separately before a live event, that's great and I have a clear overview of the links that matter. So it gives me all the links in one place for this specific webinar I've chosen. We have the presenter links, we have the attendee links, and we have the replay links available already. So right away I have like one place with an overview of all the links that matter for my webinar. To test this out, as usual, I'll basically be the webinar admin 
on my laptop and I'll have a separate screen, different browser where I'll pretend to be an attendee on my own webinar so we can see both sides of this. For the webinar host, there is the live room and there's also a separate control center where you just see all of the chat, you see all of the prepared polls and offers and things like that. And this is very useful. You can have someone being the host and someone being an assistant to the webinar and they can use the control center. So that's also pretty thoughtful here for doing webinars, especially to a larger audience and doing sales webinars and things like that where you'd want assistance. Next up, we have a series of checks, which I think are pretty good. There's some reminders of what you need to make sure of before you start. And then there's an audio and video test. In this check, there's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good that we're doing this check before we start the webinar, but you can see here, this is running off of my built-in webcam, which is rubbish. I want to use the other webcam and there's no real easy way to do this. There's no way here for me to choose a camera. I have to go to the browser settings and I have to go in here and change the camera and then reload the room before it actually uses the camera I want. This is not great. I'll start by sharing my webcam and then starting the webinar right away. This is the test webinar. And then as the guest, I will enter into our room. So we get a login prompt. And as you can see here, we also get a waiting screen because the event is still starting. All right, now we see the interface that we have as the admin and a similar interface that we have as the visitor. We have to, as a visitor, it's a bit strange. There are several steps. So you usually have to, you get a login prompt, you have to log in, and then you also have to click to actually start seeing the webinar itself. It also seems to display this connection problems thing at the top, no matter what's going on. I mean, there's no connection problem here. I'm not sure why that is. And then we have on the side, as is quite common, we have our chat. As an attendee, you can choose between chat or ask a question, but the interface is not very intuitive. Like these, these there's also a menu here with basically no real choice. You can only chat to everybody. I don't know why that's there. And this here is just, it's not very obvious, easy to miss. Someone might flip that to question, forget to flip it back. But anyway, this is an example question. As an admin, we have a similar interface just with more options, but we can also switch to the chat and basically see the same thing that our attendees see. And we can see questions marked in red. The difference between questions and chat here is not great. I think this isn't as good a feature as we've seen in some of the other solutions, but it is still good that there is a distinction. I just think it's not very well implemented. Then we can, as usual, we can share our screen and we can choose a specific application or a screen to share. And similarly, we can share a slideshow presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and share a browser window here, and then we can see it switches to a picture-in-picture -picture mode. So here, it shows me a representation of what my audience sees, which is mainly the screen and a small picture-in-picture -picture video in the lower right corner. This is pretty good, but I would like to have options to change the layout here. So if it just happens that my video is in the way of something on my screen, there's nothing I can do about it, except turn off my webcam. So if I wanna hide the webcam, I, I can turn it off. Then I have to turn it back on again. And the same is true with the screen where it's less convenient because here I can easily turn it off to bring live full screen. But then when I turn it on again, I have to go through the dialogue and choose an application again. So it's not convenient to kind of change the emphasis and switch from screen to live to both. There's also a whiteboard feature, which I think is great. So you can turn on a whiteboard and you can make that as a transparent or semi-transparent overlay, or you can make it a totally separate thing. And we have the typical features where we can draw on the whiteboard and we can choose different colors and so on, which I think is quite nice. And we can also have things like we can draw arrows on the screen so it's pretty good to annotate something that's going on on the screen. And it's fairly intuitive, easy to switch into and out of. So that's a good teaching tool. So with that, let's get into some of the best features in Webinar Jam, which are basically the engagement and marketing features. So for example, we can have polls and here's what this looks like. I will share a poll. And when I click on publish, it shows up in the chat sidebar for my attendees. 
So here we can interact with this poll as an attendee. And when I end the poll as an admin, it will also be shared on screen. So I can choose to share the results or not share the results. Importantly, I can choose when which poll is shown. So instead of it just being a bunch of polls that people can access anytime, I can make the polls part of my presentation. I can time them to you know, match my presentation. I can have people answer a question and then make a point about the results that I got and so on. And this is something that's sorely missing in some other webinar tools. Next, if we go to the attendee view, we can hide the sidebar here and focus on the entire screen. But if I go back as an admin and I'll display an offer, I'll choose the first one here and publish this. As you can see, the sidebar comes back in. So I can really show an unmistakable, unmissable offer in the middle of people's screens. As a attendee, I can still chat here. And these offers can be of different sizes. I have a fairly large image here. You can customize the headline image and button here. And the attendee can also hide this but the button stays visible. So really, once you start displaying an offer, that offer is visible for everyone, at least until they recollapse the sidebar. Another powerful feature is that you can have a scarce offer. So I've created a scarcity offer example here. When I publish this, then it shows together with a timer that tells people when this offer ends. So this could be some kind of a discount offer or something. And you can also have limited units and you can display sales in real time. So in your webinar, you can show a notification whenever someone buys and you can have that number tick down. This is an incredibly powerful sales tool. Webinar Jam will automatically record your event and make a replay available. And you can choose to have a time limited replay or no replay at all. And by default, your replay of the event is like a simulated live event, which means that there'll be a replay of the chat messages in time with the webinar as it was in the, in the live webinar. And the timing of all your polls and offers and so on will also be in sync the way it was in the recording. So people will be seeing this same interface as the replay with the same sidebar and messages and so on. So it's much closer to the real thing. They won't simply just see a video on a page. Now there's one thing to keep in mind that you might have noticed seeing these screens, which is that there's a pretty long delay between my input and the output for the attendee. But that's only for the video and audio feed. So here's an example of why we need to keep this in mind when we're presenting. If you pay attention, if I choose a poll here and I snap my fingers and then share the poll, you'll see that on the attendee screen, the poll has appeared, but I have not snapped my fingers yet. And in fact, it will take a while. And there it is. So as you can see, if you don't keep this in mind, the problem is that people will see things like polls and offers that you talk about, they will see them quite a long time before you actually start mentioning them. So that's just something to keep in mind. And just for the record, this isn't a very fast connection. So now we've had a look at this software. Let's talk about pricing. Pricing in Webinar Jam is quite a bit different from all the other solutions I've looked at so far, mainly in that it's only available on an annual subscription plan. So there's no monthly pricing plan. The starting price is for a 500 seat room for $479 per year. And while that's a lot of money all at once, it's basically $500 to get started using Webinar Jam. If you compare it to other solutions, and if you consider that it's for up to 500 people, this is actually a really good price. This is the equivalent of paying about $40 a month. And in most other platforms, you barely get anything for $40 a month. And you certainly don't get a 500 seat room with the kinds of features you get here. So it's kind of a rip off the bandaid all at once thing. It's, it is a lot to pay all at once. But if you really compare it to what you get, and what you pay for other solutions, it starts looking really good. Now let's talk about automation in the sense of evergreen webinars and automated webinar funnels and things like that. Webinar Jam doesn't have any of those features built in. Instead, they have to be purchased separately in a product called Everwebinar 
for an extra around $300 per year. If you want to do automated webinars or evergreen webinar funnels, that's something to consider. Every webinar is a powerful tool for this and you can create what feels to a visitor like a real live webinar with all the features we looked at, with all the perfect timing for your offers and polls and things. You can create that kind of experience using Webinar Jam plus every webinar, but you have to pay extra. But even with that, again, the problem is really only that you have to pay everything up front for a whole year because your 500 seat room plus all the automation features will cost you $794 per year, which is still only the equivalent of about $66 a month. And again, there's many other webinar platforms where you barely get a 100 seat room for that. So with all that said, we've seen that there are some weaknesses in Webinar Jam, but most of them are kind of convenience or cosmetic weaknesses. When it comes to the actual webinar features, I wish they polished up their UI. That's also true for the webinar room. I think there's a lot of improvement that could be made there, but it's kind of all the small stuff. The mistakes are mostly in the small stuff. The quality of the stream and of the replay was pretty decent and reliable. People that joined my webinar that I did as a test on Webinar Jam enjoyed it, didn't have any technical issues and so on. So it seems solid. Or in other words, where it matters most, Webinar Jam did not let me down. The pricing is also really good, but there's one important thing to consider. Webinar Jam is definitely a webinar solution and not a group meeting or group call solution. So if what you do is, you know, like a weekly group coaching call to a room with 12 people in it or something, then Webinar Jam is clearly not the ideal solution for that. And you're probably looking for something much cheaper. But if you're going to use webinars as a sales tool, from everything I've tested so far, Webinar Jam is the marketing option. They have put the most thought into how to enable high-end, high-quality sales webinars and educational webinars. So if you're going to be talking to a large audience, a room full of hundreds or even thousands of people, either with the goal of delivering a presentation and building audience engagement and so on, or with the goal of selling something, Webinar Jam is a good solution and it justifies its price for that use case. So those are my thoughts on Webinar Jam so far. I definitely prefer this over GoToWebinar. And I've also been testing every other webinar software I can find. As soon as I've done that, I will do one big roundup review and choose a winner. So check the description and text below this video to see if that's already happened. As soon as I have that, I will add the link. In the meantime, let me know if you have experience with Webinar Jam either as an attendee or as a host. And let me know if you have any questions or comments about today's video.